Beans engaged. Hello, inhabitants of Earth. It's your favorite standing in the middle of a wedding venue in Texas, Sarah here, with a special car review. Today, I have the all new fifth generation Acura Integra, new for 2023. They brought it back. In the last generation, the RSX, technically that was an Integra, the DC5. So, I mean, the generations went DA, DADV, DC, and then DC5 for the RSX. So this makes this the DD. <laughs> DD! <laughs> a little less than a year ago when this Integra first unveiled, it was kind of criticized as just being a rebadged ILX. It doesn't look anything like that rendering we first saw of the DC2 Inspire three-door liftback, but I am glad that they did keep this generation a liftback, like the original first DA gen that came out, which was a five-door liftback. The Integra is most known in the States for the third gen with the quad circle headlights, but honestly, my favorite generation was always the 92-93 DV2 GSR that had a straight bar headlight. And then when they went to the third gen, the JDM models also were desirable because they had that straight bar headlight. Has Acura stamped inside the housing of the headlight, and of course, you've probably seen this a million times already, that it has Integra embossed into the bumper cover. As far as the stuff that you guys all care about and what honestly matters to me most, mechanically, this is essentially an 11th gen Civic Si, which is not a bad thing because that's a phenomenal car and hatchbacks are awesome. So it's a win-win in my opinion. This does have a set of 12.3 inch front rotors with a single pot caliper. And this one has the 18 by eight gloss gunmetal wheels. Obviously you have eyes, you can see that. They're wrapped in a set of 235-40 Continental Conti Pro Contact tires. That is a really fun tire to say. Conti Pro Contact. I mean, it's a good looking wheel, but it's definitely no set of GSR blades. That's for sure. All right, so I'm gonna do my best at shoving my DSLR up under here for all of you. But uh, just like the 11th Gen SI, it also has a McPherson strut style front suspension. However, this has adaptive suspension like the 10th Gen did. My hand is in an ant pile. Well, these ants are friendly, they didn't bite. Anyway, you have a 27 millimeter hollow front anti-sway bar on this. And the rear on the non-A spec Integras, you have a 17 and a half millimeter solid anti-sway bar. And on the top A spec models, it's a 18 millimeter, also solid. Out back, just like the 11th gen SI, you got 11.1 inch rear rotor with a single pot caliper and the same size wheel and tires up front. It's square stance. And from what I can see, the rear knuckle on this thing is aluminium and all of the links out back are steel and construction. I know that looks are subjective and all, but that is a, that's an ass right there. That is a good looking back end on this car. I like it way more in person than I did in pictures. What I'm curious to see because this has a dual L exhaust is if it's similar to the Civic Si with its crazy curly Q. Yep, it is. Probably the same exhaust on this as the Si. Fair warning, my hair is gonna get crazier and crazier as this video progresses. By the end, I'm probably gonna look like Tina Turner from Beyond Thunderdome. Anyway, the curly Q that they have here on the exhaust system, that was the difference between the 10th and the 11th Gen SI. It equated to a 27% increase in flow overall, but I think what it really helped with is making the car a little bit louder on the outside without giving it that annoying fart raspy tone that the L15s kind of get when you start modifying the exhaust on them. As far as the storage space with this being a hatchback goes, yeah, that's winning right there. Look at that. This is right here why I would choose this over a Civic Si, no question, is because of the fact that it's a liftback. There's so much room. You fold those seats down, I mean, you could probably put a a fence gate for a, a small horse pen. I don't know what people haul. 20 years from now, these will be going for a fortune on eBay because so many people are gonna lose or throw them away. So this one is equipped with the red interior, which is Alcantara suede in the center. Oh, so, so soft. Bolstering wise, satisfactory, more than satisfactory. Yeah, that's jiggle proof. That's a pretty comfy seat. It's heated. 
The Alcantara suede though, it feels so good in the back of your thighs. Got some USBs back here. Plenty of leg room, but uh, my head is hitting the roof. I mean, it's not really brutal. I, if I slouch down, I fit just fine. But if you have super good posture, then congrats, because that's a rare thing to have excellent posture. I like the floor mats. I got the little red trim around them. Uh, center armrest, got some cuppy boys. But yeah, no suede Alcantara in the back. Well, that's weird. This is an airbag. That's the strangest airbag portal I've ever seen before. It definitely has more of a high-end feel than a Civic Si in here, though. The steering wheel, the airbag in the center is very tiny and just kind of open and airy feeling, kind of like an Audi almost, just that open, airy feeling you get in the driver's seat. Are you clicky? Oh yeah, that's satisfying. This definitely doesn't feel like a Honda Acura parts bin car on the interior. It has little elements that you can see from the Civic Si. The part that I loved, the grill vents, it just doesn't go all the way across like it does in the Civic Si. It looks clean in here. It's got all kinds of USB ports and a little wireless charge pad for your smartphone. There's plenty of room in there too in case you got a big case. Whatever this material is that is around it, it has like this pearl effect and it's zippy. The gauges are great in here too. I like that it's got this little old school Kind of analog looking temp and fuel gauge off to the side. It's digital analog-esque looking. And then you got the full digital display in the center and you can change your tack out for a bunch of other things. Now this is the top trim spec screen that you get. It's slightly larger, but what I like about it is the sounds it makes in the menu. The little boops. It's just, it's a satisfying little boop that it makes. Nice cute graphics too. Wait, clicky? The ELS Studio sound system, you can't hear this, but I'm blasting XL Liquid Metal to Baba Yaga, Slaughter to Prevail. Yeah, that absolutely makes me want to sacrifice a baby sheep. It's time for the braking test. No one behind me? Ready? Oh, jeez. Those are good. Great. Absolutely great. Where are you? There you are. Grab the rubber so you don't burn your fingers. That's what it's there for. Hello, and welcome to Tree Science. Because trees function as garages in nature. Anyway, under the head of this 2023 Acura Integra is the L15CA, which is a 1.5 liter dual overhead cam, direct injected, turbocharged four cylinder that produces 200 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 192 pound feet of torque from 1,800 to 5,000 RPM. I like the fact that they did not put a fake plastic engine cover, even though this is an Acura on the Integra. It still looks a lot like the Civic Si under here, other than the fact that it's got an Acura logo on the plastic valve cover right here. In case you were not familiar, the L15CA recently replaced the L15B7, which was found in the 10th generation Civic Si. Now the 22 and up SIs and the Integra both have the L15CA. So here's the thing. Acura Honda is absolutely sandbagging with the power figures of this engine. 200 horsepower, my ass. This thing is absolutely more powerful than what it is rated, and I'm fine with that because the opposite sucks when something is underrated. No one likes that. As far as the turb ski up front here goes, it's a MHI TDO3 running at 17.8 PSI. The exhaust manifold is mostly cast into the head, so it has two cylinders going to one exhaust port and two more cylinders going to the other exhaust port where the turbo actually bolts up to. Digging in a little bit deeper on this L15, even though it is all aluminum, it does have cast iron cylinder liners. It has forged rods, a 73 by 89 and a half millimeter bore in stroke with a 10 point 3 to 1 compression ratio. It is direct injected only and as far as the valves go it has variable time control on the intake and exhaust but VTEC only on the exhaust side of things. See on the back half of the engine right here there's actually tons of room to access and work on things. You can see the alternator back there and the steering rack. This actually doesn't look like it'd be too hard of a car to work on just like the Civic which I love about this. 
in the name of science, I am now gonna give this thing the beans. As far as drive modes go, down here in the center console, I have a little toggle that says dynamic mode. And then they give you a separate button for individual. That's kind of cute. Inside individual, you can configure it however you want it. You hold it down and then you can see all your settings. You have engine, steering, suspension, idle stop start. That should always be disabled, that's annoying. Gauges, you can change the color of your gauges. And then you also have normal, comfort. Ooh, that's pretty. And sport. I love the graphics that they use in here. It's very almost anime-like. I'm going to put it into sport. Also, defeat traction control. Although it says traction control reduced and I held that button down for like a minute and it didn't further reduce it all the way to off. So maybe there's a hidden setting that I haven't found yet, but I don't have a lot of time in this car today. Give this thing a light launch and see what it can do. Ready? No wheel spin. Oh, there's wheel spin. Come on, get it Integra. Oh, I can feel it. The traction control still intervened a little bit right there. That's not bad. Definitely felt that traction control hampering though. It's weird because it doesn't feel super fast and then you look at the speedometer and it, it's a lot quicker than you would actually think you're going. It's very linear and smooth, the power delivery. Now this Integra does have the six speed manual in it. You can get it with a CVT. Why, I don't know why you'd wanna do that to the Integra. So just like the Civic Si, it has a single mass flywheel, the auto rev match downshifting that you can turn off, but you can only get the six speed manual on the fully specced out top version of the A-Spec Integra. You can't get it on a base model because you, you just get a Civic Si if you want a base model Integra with a manual. It just makes more sense. This is supposed to be a premium approach over a Civic Si. So I actually respect that. And for this thing being 35 grand and change, it's not that much drastic in price over a base entry $30,000 Integra. Time to take this thing for a rip. engaged. No torque steer. Weird. I was expecting to have a little bit of torque steer there, but I'm sure under a certain situation you could probably make it do it, like if you were coming up over a crest on power, because I noticed that in the 11th gen SI, I got the torque steer there. But So this is strange. Over the short amount of time I've had driving this car, I don't feel like I'm driving the 11th gen SI and I just reviewed that not too long ago. I don't know why. I mean, mechanically, this is essentially the same car, but in my head, sitting here right now in the driver's seat, I don't feel like I'm in a Civic SI. I can't, I don't know why that is. I can't explain why that is, but I don't feel like I'm in that car. And I like that about this because that's what the Integra should be. It's pretty much a Civic, but it's not. I was a little sad that they didn't offer a three-door lift back, like the OG Integras, but I mean, the original DA generation started out with a five-door lift back, so it kind of makes sense to bring this back with the original recipe. And I don't think a lot of people would buy a three-door lift back, like diehard car enthusiasts would, but we're a dying breed. I'm not on a racetrack right now, so I can't push this thing to its limits and tell you how it apexes corners because I'm terrible with words anyway. I'm not a real journalist, so <laughs> I don't think I could ever do that for you. But um, I mean, I'm pretty sure this will do just as good as a Civic on a track. That extra weight you really don't notice in this manual transmission version. I did not drive the CVT version while I was here. I just was, I don't think any of you would really care or be interested. There was, will be a few, but I was just more interested in the fact that it has six speed manual, which had a 65% take rate on pre-orders. 65% of you chose a manual when you pre-ordered. That's what's up. Everything that I was kind of meh on with the Civic Si, this addresses. This is, to me, this is the car right here. Minus the one thing that I would change and that would be to make it a three door instead of a five door. I just don't have a lot of friends. So 
Costco. I don't need a back seat. For 35 grand, this thing has got plenty of tech in it. I got a heads up display. That's high end. These gauges are nice looking. The steering wheel's soft to the touch. It's not heated though. But if you touch the top of it right there in the sun, it's black leather. It's definitely heated. And if you ride on the rumble strip on the side of the road, it also vibrates to massage your hands. It's a feature that the highway department put in that you didn't even know about. Uh, fuel efficiency wise, it's great. Just like the Civic Si, can't go wrong for how quick the car is. Uh, and modability of this car, the L15s, so much potential in that engine too. Before I say anything, I have to address, I know my knees are red and crazy looking right now. I was kneeling in twigs and rocks and bark and got bit by an ant. That ant was a real dick, just FYI, to film this for you. So that's why they look like that. Anyway, as far as giving this thing a score and assessment like I do in my normal reviews, I don't think it'd be fair to do that because I didn't have enough time with the car to really assess it on that level. So I'm not going to assign any numbers to it. If I get the car again, I'll do a full review up on the lift with it and give it a rating that way then. Probably put it on my second channel. Anyway, uh, idea being wise, it's going to be real close to the Civic Si. However, even though this weighs 100 pounds and change more, it actually felt a hair faster, which makes no sense whatsoever. Maybe I just sent it harder because I'm in Texas. It's just the thing you do in Texas, I guess. Value wise, I think for 35 grand and change for the fully spec'd out version, and they don't charge you a difference if you want a CVT or a manual. Honestly, they should pay you to buy a CVT. I'm sure it's great. I'm sorry, Acura, just, I don't care about a CVT and an Integra. I just, manual only is the way to go in this car. Ease of maintenance wise, just as good as the Civic Si. I don't think there's any more added complexities of the Integra over the Civic Si. And I think it's a great platform for someone that's looking to getting into having a tuner car that they want to work on and customize. And I look forward to a Type S version of this thing. I, everyone knows it's gonna happen. They haven't said it officially, but it's gonna happen. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of review-ish. <laughs> and I'll see you soon with another. Bye.